Shards of Honor is the first book by publication order of Lois McMaster Behold's massive space opera series, The Verkozigan Saga. The Verkozigan Saga spans more than 20 novels, novellas, and short stories, blends space opera, military sci-fi, and many other subgenres of science fiction, and has won numerous Hugo and Nebula awards. I recommend The Verkozigan Saga for any reader looking for a series that's immediately engaging and well-paced, set among the stars and featuring characters that you're going to want to root for. I recommend the Verkozigan Saga as a series to get completely lost in. The series is huge, the world building is vast, and only gets better as it goes. I recommend Shards of Honor as a great space opera with war, politics, espionage, capture and escape, and two characters who've met their match in each other. I recommend going into the book considering it as the first read of an intended series investment. The book is enjoyable on its own, but it works even better as a table setter for a several books adventure. If you've read Shards of Honor, stick around and let me know what you think. If you haven't read it, this review will avoid any clear or serious spoilers, so also stick around and tell me in the comments if you think you might start the series. The first person that we meet in Shards of Honor is Starship Captain, Commander, Researcher, Team Leader, Cordelia Naismith of Beta Colony, along with her team from the Baton Astronomical Survey, her biome cataloging activities are interrupted by an attack. How was she to know that the planet Sergiar had been claimed by the Emperor of Bariar? Sergiar is an interesting alien world, mostly deserted, but for Cordelia's team and the group of military aggressors from Bariar. Navigating the landscape is not without its challenges, avoiding hostile Bariar forces, assisting the injured or incapacitated, limited rations, and scavengers. One such threatening alien scavenger is compared to and hastily named Vampire Balloons. You might want to look out for those bloodsuckers. On Sergiar, Cordelia will cross paths with Captain Errol Verkozgen, presumed leader of the Bariaran military force. We can also toss that word around some more for Verkozgen. He is also the notorious presumed butcher of Komar, presumably responsible for the slaughter and atrocities committed during what came to be known as the Solstice Massacre. Naismith and Verkozigan proved to be formidable strategic individuals who throughout the story almost seem to be one step ahead of everybody else. While their fates to some degree are entangled, their individual challenges are a bit unique. Verkozigan comes from a powerful military tradition on Bariar, and as one who has the Emperor's eyes on him for any number of reasons, he's constantly surrounded by political maneuvering, espionage, and tested loyalties, and always at the ready to be sent into battle. Cordelia proves to be very sharp minded and when threatened a very rational thinker. Her inner dialogue that we are sometimes privy to is just as compelling as the posturing, deception, negotiations that she makes with her allies and foes as she wills herself to survive. As mentioned, this is solid space opera. The main settings will be space and spaceships and the worlds of Sergei, of course, and another planet Escobar as its proximity to a wormhole is strategically significant. Even less spoilery than the back of the book, you will quickly surmise, and the title of this series is more than a hint, that there is a strong vein of will they or won't they romantic energy running through the story. Errol Verkozigan and Cordelia Naismith are different types of people from very different worlds, but what they share in common are personal honor, strategic minds, devotion to those in their charge, mutual respect, and some degree of trust. Is this a strong enough foundation on which to build something that can overcome the obvious obstacle that they are adversaries? Keeping spoiler free until I alert you otherwise, here are my five likes and five dislikes for Lois McMaster Beholds, fit to be read first book of the Verkozigan saga, Shards of Honor. Like number one, the romantic vein that I mentioned is paced very well. There are moments that on their face should feel unbelievable, unrealistic, but I feel that Behold sells it well, having spent the right amount of time developing the main characters and the basic necessary details of the worlds that they come from. Like number two, the action is solid throughout. In space opera, I'm happy if I get most of what I want, personal conflict, politics, time spent in space and on and around spaceships, space battles, multiple planets and theaters of action. Shards of Honor delivers all of these without any lulls. Dislike number one, character development overall was a win for me in this book. The amount that was provided that made the relationships believable was strong, but unfortunately it did stall out a bit in the second half of the book. It almost feels like a lot was held in reserve to share in the eventual sequels. I can't be too disappointed in this, however, as these characters do continue to impress in said sequels. Dislike number two, Shards of Honor gave me all the ingredients that I want in space opera, but didn't blow my socks off. It's an issue of doing many things well, but not any one thing perfectly. This again may be the effect of being book one of a planned long series. It's probably helpful expectations wise to go in expecting great political intrigue. 
In some ways, the novel feels almost like a novella. It does deliver in this regard, but there is definitely more to be revealed in the sequels. Dislike number three, details of Rokosigan's life in Homeworld were substantial, while very little was offered about who Cordelia was before Sargiar and where she came from. Dislike number four, a universe with many inhabited or visited planets is great, but I found that Escobar was shortchanged considering its importance to the story. Relative to Baryar and Sargiar, it was a bit of a letdown. Quick heads up, at this point I will be including spoilers. Dislike number five, the climactic space and planetary battle near the wormhole could have been more clearly written. I don't think it was my fault that it was confusing to me about what was precisely going on with the bait and strategy beyond the obvious main diversion. Like number three, the dark scene of sexual abuse. While I can understand why many might be put off by it, I believe it shows a courageous writing decision by Behold. It's off-putting that Cordelia shows compassion to her would-be attacker, going so far as to try and ease his guilt. The other side of this, though, is presenting a heroine who is rational, refusing to cede control of the situation, and measuring the situation to choose how she will or will not suffer. This moment, more than any other in the book, defines Cordelia. Like number four, Botharia is a decent secondary character. There are at least three different versions of him, and it's refreshing to see that in a non-primary character. Like number five, this is a very smooth four-star read and it doesn't take much more than a page to answer how long is this one going to take me to get into it the balance between action politics romance and science fiction is set just right making the book pretty unputdownable the really good news is if this book is a three stars or above for you you will love the rest of the story because you haven't even met its best character yet miles Verkozigan. thank you for watching i'm michael leverts and this is fit to be read planets apart wormholes away Made on alien terrain I hear your heart You stole mine And there's so much more to gain A proposal don't say never For us to be together From Strong forever as one Could you be